Hi kids, this is Ivan, how you doing? This is gonna be a video response to Chalice and Chains, to Sam. And he made a video asking, do skills uh, detract from role playing? In, in, I think specifically in Dungeons and Dragons, but do they detract, having a skill system, does that detract from role playing? And there's been some great answers. I, I watched a few videos by people already and some you know answers that they posted on thread or whatnot. So I wanted to kind of put my two cents in, uh, give my perspective now because I would have answered this question differently you know, some time ago. Um, so my answer really is, it depends. <laughs> it depends on how you do it. it. Depends on how you role play things or you know, how you implement the mechanics. And this really doesn't matter whether it's a skill mechanic or just any other mechanic when it comes right down to it. Uh, I think you know, some of the, uh, I don't wanna say paradigm shifts, but, I, but I've kind of stepped back and, and uh, looked at how I approach um, any kind of roles, any kind of stats on a character sheet in, in playing games. You know, playing playing games like this bad boy, you know, like, you know, just a totally skill-based game as opposed to a class level-based game where everything is about skills. Your entire character sheet, really, you got some attributes, but everything else is, is you know, skills. That's how you're really going to interface with the game. There's you know, very few roles or situations where you're just going to use a raw ability. Everything else is, is based around some kind of skill, whether you're unskilled at it, whether you have a lot of skill at it really depends on, on how you frame things. Depends on how you, as a game master, how you look at the other person's character sheet. You know, how do you, how do you envision the character? You know, first, uh, first off, you know, and first and foremost, you know, I'm used to looking at a character at, at the attributes and kind of gauging, well, what kind of person are they based on these attributes? You know, how strong are they? How charismatic are they? You know, how dexterous are they? You know, all that kind of good junk. How smart or dumb are they? <laughs> and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, but in a, in a game that uses skills as a, um, a basic framework, you, you don't have a class, so it doesn't tell you like a skill set or, you know, a, a group of skills or something that you're, you're uh, assumed to have, this character is supposed to have. And a lot of times it's, they're tacitly assumed because, you know, there's no rule for that. And like say, OSR D&D, &D, it's not gonna say, well, the wizard has all these skills. It's just kind of this tacit assumption. It depends from group to group. I'm, I'm going off on this tangent already, aren't I? But you know, in a game like, you know, something used Ubiquity, a zillion other skill-based systems, that now also informs me, what is this person like? You know, if they have a lot of dice in diplomacy, okay, well, I guess they're very diplomatic. If they have no dice in diplomacy, well, I guess they're not really skilled at that. They're, they're not so good at, at talking to other people and persuading and being, you know, diplomatic. They might be very charismatic. They might be a very likable person, but they don't have a hell of a lot of skill in, in that uh, in diplomacy. You know, maybe maybe just a little bit based on the raw talent, but not as much as you know, they could have another character at the table. Doesn't have as high of a charisma score, but has put a lot of um, you know put a lot of their resources into diplomacy. This automatically kind of tells me what kind of person they are. So at this point, do we just do a die roll, or do we do something different? How do we frame the intent? How do we frame and narrate? The results. And I think a lot of those those things I had to think about some more, and things that I've done in the past just kind of without thinking about them, and now you know taking a step back and looking at well how do we really implement this kind of stuff in games, and you can play any game in, in a very um, I don't want to say it's almost like Pavlovian manner, you know okay there's a monster I'm gonna roll my attack roll I'm gonna roll my damage roll it's all just numbers, and you know we can any play any game like that it doesn't matter what the game is. You can play any game, whether it's uh, you know OSR D and D, where okay, I'm gonna go check for traps and I make a check for traps roll, or I'm gonna I'll play you know this and say I'm gonna I don't know uh, use stealth or I'm gonna use use diplomacy and I'll make a roll. Oh, okay, I, su I succeed at this. You know, I hit the difficulty number. Hooray! And there's no real narration or role playing going on at all. And I think you know um, I, I think complex games apologists actually kind of pointed this out that. It, I think Sam's probably talking more about narration than role playing. Role playing is what we do, and we kind of step into that character and act like them. But here now we're we're uh, we, we're encountering a problem. We have to bring a skill to bear. We have to take some kind of action, whether it's looking for a trap and seeing if the area is safe, whether it's being stealthy, stealthy or whether um, we're trying to use some diplomacy, you know, whatever it might be. At, at that point, we could. You're kind of going like with the um, the old school mentality, or not mentality, but you know, oftentimes what happens is there's an argument about this 
the polemic, you know, by by somebody like myself, by my crowd, by the old school crowd would say, well, hey, instead of just rolling this die, I'm going to go, you know, use my stealth skill or check for traps. I'm going to describe how I'm looking for the traps. And, you know, a CGA makes this great point. That's that's a lot of fun the first 10 or 20 times. And you're like, OK, well, this is getting kind of tedious. So you can you, you can kind of ease back on the narration in terms of your intent. What are you actually doing? Have the dice roll. Have your skill roll. Whatever it is, I gotta try to be diplomatic. I gotta put on my best, you know, sweet syrupy, you know, speech and, and really kind of roll up to this guy and, you know, try to convince him to let us in this this nightclub, right? Then you have the die roll, and you don't engage in you know what we've been calling like premature imagination. I believe Runesinger might have made that one up. Great, great one. Wait till the dice are rolled. Wait till they indicate failure or success, and then figure out well who gets to narrate what. Are we going to do something like um, Fantasy Flight Star Wars, where it's codified that the game master narrates failures and the players narrate success? Or most games really don't have that. You know, it's codified. We kind of figure out, you know, feel it out. Like, how are we going to do this? What's our culture of play? And who, who, who narrates what? And if you're narrating success, you don't just have to say, you find the trap. I find the trap. You can go into detail. Well, how do you do that? I've gotten better over time in playing ubiquity-based games where it's, you're really encouraged to narrate. Well, if you succeed, how do you succeed? What does this look like? And it could be, you know, several sword thrusts from the musketeer, right? You know, a, a stunning machine gun shot from the uh, the crazed adventurer, you know, soldier turned you know, mercenary. Or it could be something where you're succeeding in uh, uh, taking uh, less damage than you were supposed to. <laughs> and describe how you do that. You succeed in talking your way past the bouncer at the nightclub and letting, letting uh, having them let you in. Well, how do you do that? How does that conversation go? So you can, you know, in, uh, insert all kinds of role playing, all kinds of narration in there with the mechanic. You know, once it, going back to like what I was talking about a little while ago, as I'm rambling in this video that's longer than it should be, you can look at those those character sheets again and see, well, okay, well, this guy has quite a diplomacy score. You know, how how easy is it going to be for this guy? This is probably the guy that should go talk to the bouncer, right? Probably shouldn't should be Fred. Probably should be Charlie. Charlie's got all the diplomacy skill, and maybe you you eyeball and say, hey, you know, whether it's an OSR D and D game, or whether it's you know Hollow Earth Expedition or whatever, you eyeball and say, hey, you know, you don't need to roll. You can take the average, or man, you're just, you're just that good. You know, go ahead and narrate. How does this look? And a lot of times that's what we did in old school D and D. We would narrate. Sometimes a lot of times a game master would narrate. At least where I was from, you know how the success looked. But you can have this kind of back and forth conversation. I don't know how does this go? But I believe part of it, at least for me now, is you know framing a lot of that narration, you know, post success or post failure, as opposed to this big giant, you know, it's incredibly tedious and boring and you know kind of a letdown to go through that entire giant narration. I think it might be in the first edition DM guide that really everybody references of how you're going to look and search the room and, and look at all this stuff and then find nothing because you had a crappy die roll <laughs> as opposed to, you know, search, you know, go into like pretty much how you're going to search the room a little bit. I'm going to search extensively and carefully and have the die roll and then see what happens. So I believe it's, it's how you frame it. How do you, how do you frame the narration? Where do you put that narration? You know, how do you utilize those skills? Are you just going to use them as numbers on a character sheet? And, you know, okay, yeah, I'm going to be stealthy. Roll the dice. Oh, you, you, you succeeded. Oh, you failed. And then at that point, it's just, it's just numbers. You know? and, and, and in that case, you know, uh, Charles and Jane's argument stands. But it doesn't matter what game you're playing. It doesn't matter if you're playing Lamentations of the Flame Princess that way. Or whether you're playing 5th edition D&D or something like Hollow Earth Expedition. It's how you play the game as a player and as a game master. So that's my rather long-winded answer or take on that. So I don't think that skills really um, hurt role play in any game. Any mechanic hurts role play in any game, but it's how you approach those mechanics.